How do you do it? How do you do it? We had to tone it down. What a bunch of shit. This could be the potential. But we're not getting that. Or are we? Let's just do it. So today we discussed 1080p. Is it good enough? Not only is it more than good enough, it's fun. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Fuji X-T4. 16 mil tone at 1.4, at 1.4, bright sky, 8,000 shutter for sure, overexposed, I don't mind it, face detect, malfunctioning, that's good. I made a bunch of notes on why 1080p is still good enough and I forgot it at home, so this video will suck and let's just wing it. We're gonna make it happen. So let's not forget the journey towards the perfect camera that we're all on together has been for the perfect 1080p cam. I never needed 4K. The only reason I even started considering it was when I got the GoPro 8 and saw how terrible the 1080p was. I couldn't believe it. So I was like, I have to switch to 4K. Then I had to upgrade the computer just to handle it. That brings us to the first reason one might consider 1080p over 4K. It's just so much easier to handle the editing, no matter what your camera is, 1080p is easier. 4K, Fuji, hmm, bit of a problem, bit hard. But you switch to 1080p, no problem. Slice it, slice and dodge. Everything about a 1080p workflow just improves your life so hard. The smaller file sizes, that might, you might think it doesn't matter. I have a one terabyte SSD drive and then another two terabyte external inside my computer. So it's also eternal. Eternal? Oh boy. Let's move on quick. Nobody noticed it. And I have a couple spare drives that have old videos on. I have a lot of space, but I release, in case y'all haven't noticed, like seven videos a week on both my channels. So I have, right now, I think I have 13 files, videos completed with all the originals on my desktop right now. 4K? Those are nightmares. One video could be like 80 gigs in 4K. 1080p, 14 gigs, max. I don't know math. Let's stop it down to Tony 2, just to see if that's somewhat respectable. And then we're not clipping. Is it magic enough back there? Is there magic? Are there Tony balls? How many are there? So workflow wise, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. Then, here's an interesting thing you never thought of. You know how people say, Oh, I'm shooting 8K to future-proof your camera. The dumbest thing I've ever heard. 1080p, I, I wrote it down. It was so much better than off the top of my cuff. It future exaggerates your dilemma of being a caveman loser for future generations watching your channel in 20 years. We look back at old videos shot in 480p on YouTube. You're looking at a, like a tutorial on how to pump up a bike tire or something. It's like the worst quality ever, but you're like, oh, look at that. That's what humans used to do. And you get this nostalgic experience. That's what you could provide your future generation with 1080p footage. Look at you. As the Fuji autofocus system adapts so seamlessly to every environment, I can see somebody in my Black Pro Mist filter where I couldn't see them in the flippy screen. Wow, wow. So you're generational proofing your camera to let future species know how much you sucked. And that's a good thing, it's a good thing. Here's the Tony 2.8 lens. Oh, look at this. What a great decision that was, Fuji, to make a 2.8. There ain't no magic back there. Stop it. Another advantage to 1080p shooting you can now use a Canon camera without much penalty. For the longest time, at least the R5 and R6 can do 4K, not that your computer could avoid fire, but there's so many Canon cameras with that super 4K crop, like a 1.7 times 
as well as removing their best feature, dual pixel autofocus. So now, if you avoid all the 4K nonsense and you just 1080p, your EOS R, fantastic camera. RP, they lowered the price on that package. I almost pounced. I want to pounce so hard. It's with the EF 50mm 1.4 and a Canon RP for 1183 Canadian. That's $11 American and Swahili numbers. My God. We got free oven mitts, my friend. Oh, what a time to be alive. I think I'm getting, you know what? My girlfriend, we have a silicon one. She doesn't like it. Honey, I'm coming home. Does this have the virus? As he packs up his belongings using the Nebula tripod, perfect height. Stopping down to Tony 2.2 so you can see the framing of a wall that I carefully planned. You know, some cameras, unfortunately, don't do 1080p very well. You're not looking at one. Before the Sony a7S III came into our life, that's the top of the mountain 1080p. It's almost 4K on most other cameras. You do a side-by-side, -side, Sony would crush it. It would crush your dreams. Next, I would say Fuji. Amazing 1080p until you put it side by side with the a7s and then you're like, oh, okay, maybe not, but it's good enough. It's good enough. You know who does terrible 1080p? GoPro. It's not like I'm switching full on to 1080p because you can't. The Huawei P40 Pro, which is in my backpack because this sweater can't hold it. Oh, my whole thing. That tripod review I did, I was like, oh, this one's too big. In summertime, you can't put the phone thing in your pocket, so you gotta carry it. I would switch to that other one. The MT-16, was it? I don't even know what I did. Point is, that phone is terrible 1080p. You can't even use it. So the Fuji, fantastic. Panasonic, amazing 1080p. Canon, because they know they can't do 4K, so they do pretty good 1080p. Why do I, like, I slur my words like a drunk man whenever I say 1080p? It's 2K. It's 2K. Canon does fantastic 2K. When I do side-by-sides, and that's in 1080p, ah, shit. 2K. They went, one might even say that the Canon 4K crop is an advantage. You film your whole show wide-angle 2K, and then zoom in for squirrel action. Woodpecker bliss zoomed right in there on your stupid giant ass lens they got no lenses you suck also in my opinion if you're filming your face 4k is overkill like it's rude if anything i don't want to see every pore i don't need to i don't know where you ate dinner last night but it wasn't at my house because you got sauce on your lip it's too much there's no need for the next 40 years like canon they're pushing 8k Nikon, Z9, we're gonna have it. Everybody's, that's the race? What happened to giant pixels? Just a little side tangent. I'm starting to doubt that the giant pixels even matter because we're seeing like Sony A1 leading dynamic range. All these other cameras, Nikon. I think Sony is one of the worst. One of the worst, proven by Scientology. It's not that great. There's something wrong with it. Those giant pixels, they do bad things to good people. The ISO's too high, too much noise. Help. I don't mean to alarm you, but we have free magazines. All right, we're going for Tony 1.4 glory to end it off. So to sum it up, 1080p, 2K, much easier to edit, smaller file sizes, better workflow, better looking person in the screen, less detail. Generations ahead of you will laugh, but in a good way, in a nostalgic, around the campfire type of way. It's just fantastic. If I forgot any of the points that I wrote down, I will return to our roots. I did remember, just thinking of it. When you switch to a slow motion, 240 frames per second, that's always 2K. So it's less of a jarring switch. If you're in 4K, then like, oh, I'll do slow motion and much worse quality. 
it's not as bad. It's almost the same. And people bitching about, oh, we just need 4K 60p. We got 10, 1080p, 60p, no problem. Every single camera, every little point and shoot does it. And 120p and 240, sometimes 480. Dare we dream it? I dream it. So what do you think? 2K is a good enough? I think it is. For the next 20 years, we're good. Maybe we'll switch to 4K 2041. I'm gonna go after you buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt and subscribe. Don't know what I'm saying,